Okay, good morning. I'm going to continue our lesson on inversion of the differential kinematics. And today we are going to afford uh, one of the core lessons uh, in kinematic control. So we will uh, learn how to implement <laughs> algorithms that allow us to, uh, to assign a joint space trajectory that will fulfill the desired Cartesian one. Okay? So this is uh, the um, control loops. We are going to address the orange block, the inverse kinematics one. We will have uh, a desired trajectory for the end effect. For the moment, let us focus at the position. Uh, we will spend some time about the orientation because as I said, we discovered that the orientation is always a little bit uh, more tricky with respect to the position. So let us focus the attention on the, on the position. We want to follow a certain desired trajectory at the end effector. Just imagine a, a segment in the end effector, and I want to, my end effector to follow the segment. With a certain time law, we will study next Friday uh, I mean, how to assign very simple time laws to desired trajectories. But since my control, my motors, my actuators are in the joint space, I need to make uh, the inverse mapping between the end effector and the joints. And we are going to use the differential kinematics. So we are going to use the, the velocities in order to do it. We just m briefly mentioned it, that if I just discretize the differential kinematics, uh, the result is not satisfactory. I have a drift in the solution. And we will see later today a numerical example that very simply show what does it mean to have a drift, a drift in the solution. I need to close the loop. What does it mean to close the loop? Well, I need to define an error and to design a controller such as my error goes to zero. So this means, in, in briefly in words, how to define a controller. My error is, in this moment, simply desired minus current end effect of position and orientation. Now, I want to study the dynamics of this error. And uh, for the students that follow Teoria dei Sistemi, uh, so linear dynamic systems, when I, they know that when I say I want to study the dynamics, I'm basically computing the time derivative and studying the evolution. So let us just make the first order time derivative. Now, who is x dot desired? This is given that by the problem. Okay. If I want to follow a certain a segment in the Cartesian space, I assign a certain time law. What does it mean? I say, OK, you just have to accelerate to reach a cruise velocity, and then to decelerate in order to stay still at the end. Okay. This is all the information is here. And we're going to do it next Friday. It's very simple. And uh, who is? Uh, who is uh, x dot? Well, here we do want we do want the joint to appear because now we want to design a proper controller. A controller means I want to assign the desired Q, assuming that I have. Uh, a perfect dynamic controller here that follows the desired Q. Okay? Our assumption in kinematic control is that the low level controller is perfect. It means that if I'm able to design this controller, it's done. 
actually this assumption is not so strong in the sense that uh, uh, this is the way we control our robot in the lab, for example. We do use the low-level controller of the manufacturer, and we design this one. Okay. Of course, we can also do all together. We will do it uh, with, uh, with the students of uh, uh, Laurea Magistrale Infor uh, Informatica. We will continue and design also some low-level controllers. But for the other, we will remain here, as I told you last lesson. So now my uh, purpose is to find a certain Q dot such that the error goes to zero. I'm designing a controller. And the very first design will be very, very easy. Well, if I consider as control rule If I implement this control law, let's see, uh, sorry, here is analytical index. Okay, this is square. We will see when it is not square, what are the changes. Conceptually, there are, there are any. So if I decide to assign Q dot in that way, well, I can verify the effect on the dynamics simply substituting this one here. Let us do it. Let us assume that uh, we are not in a kinematic singularity, so the inverse of the Jacobian, it does exist. Here, I have the identity matrix, okay? Then I have x dot desired minus x dot desired. I intentionally included x dot desired here in order to cancel it, but then it means that uh, I have, here there is a minus, okay? So I bring it on the other side. And this is uh, very nice, because uh, those are uh, linear differential equations. The simplest possible uh, differential equations that we can find. And those are the kind of equations that uh, we already met in uh, control theory, both in input output and uh, in uh, input state output, so uh, dynamic system. K is uh, a design matrix. I select K. K is the matrix with all the gains. If I do not have uh, any specific reason, I select K as a diagonal matrix. But if this is diagonal, I simply have uh, six scalar linear differential equations. Question for the guys that made dynamics. What is the solution of this one? For them. I want to, to, to verify if I mean they they just made the exam a couple of weeks or one month ago. So what is the, the solution for this one? If 
I write x instead of e, do you, do you, and lambda instead of k, do you remember that it's formally equal to? It's not Monday morning. OK, vectorial, let's see the, the solution directly from this one. Okay, it is unfortunate the symbology, but we cannot avoid because E is the error, but this E is the never number. So this is the matrix exponential that we saw several for several hours in uh, uh, dynamic systems, and this is the those are the initial conditions, and here we have uh, the evolution E function of time. Okay, so what is important is that uh, with the positive uh, with positive uh, uh, k, here I have a, a minus somewhere because this is minus. With a positive, uh, with a positive uh, k, I'm able to send the error to zero with the desired dynamics. It means that with k, I can assign the velocity of convergence to zero. Okay. And we will make a lot of practice on that uh, and the way how to decide uh, the gain. What, what, what will be the, the, the effect of a certain gain rather than another? Okay. This is uh, the first argument. It's very, very easy. And uh, the block diagram of it is this one. Uh, let us look a little bit the block diagram, starting from uh, from here, Q dot. Okay, so our formula is Q dot is equal the inverse of the analytical Jacobian. Okay, analytical because we made a pure time differentiation of uh, x. We will use the geometric Jacobian next slide. Uh, I need. Uh, the Jacobian, and then I need to compute x dot desired plus k e. So here, q dot is equal, a block that computes the inverse of the Jacobian, that multiply and the input I need to com co compute x dot desired plus k e. So x dot desired comes from uh, the user requirements, so it comes from outside as an input to my controller, plus this is uh, a matrix multiplication of k that multiply the error. And the error is computed as x desired coming from uh, outside minus and the factor uh, position orientation that is computed in real time. This is the direct kinematics by using q. And q is the output of the integrator. Now, this is the controller. This q is given to the low level controller as desired Q or as reference Q. Okay? Having made the assumption that the low level controller is perfect, this Q for us can be considered the current joint configuration. Okay? We can totally ignore what happened at the dynamic level in a first, I mean, uh, in the first simplification, in the first moment. And this is what you're going to do. Actually, if you use uh, uh, software such as Simulink, uh, this is already a kind uh, of uh, uh, programming scheme, in the sense that uh, for the ones of you that uh, do know Simulink, uh, Simulink is a graphical programming tool where you use various blocks. There is a library of functions, as for all, all the numerical programming, but in that case, the integral is a block with the graphical symbol of integral. You just drag it, configure it, and you can use it. So from uh, the programming aspect, this block diagram, diagram can be also considered uh, as uh, a uh, uh, sketch of its implementation. We are not going to use Simulink in this class, okay? But 
is uh, used a lot in uh, control, in uh, robotics, and so on. We are not going to use it. I prefer not to use it. OK. If I have a redundant robot, the only difference is that I can use, uh, I need to use the pseudo inverse instead of the inverse, but I, I can use <coughs> the null space. My Q dot is now the pseudo inverse, then I have the same here, and here I have uh, the null space project. Okay? We already have seen this guy. What happened uh, when I substituted here? So let us substitute it here. We have uh, Q dot equal. Now, instead of Q dot, I put this one. Q dot A is this one, I just, so now, what is the result of this one? Let us see. J multiplied uh, the third inverse, the right third inverse, is the identity matrix. Okay. So here, I do have the same steps as the other one. This is the identity matrix. Here, I, I have x dot desired that simplified this one, and plus k e. Then I have the Jacobian, multiplied its new space project. And we have seen last Monday that this is zero. So in the end, I have x dot the third minus This is zero. And this is zero on purpose because I'm using the null space projector that we saw two days ago. Here we have the identity matrix. We simplify x dot the side. Well, very nicely, I have exactly the same closed loop solution as the non redundant case, E dot plus K E equal zero, <coughs> the same. So the end effector is not affected by my use of the redundancy. Because I'm doing a smart use of the redundancy. I select a certain arbitrary joint velocity vector, but then I project it in a null space. So no matter what is Q dot A, I first uh, filter out all the components that would have changed the end effector trajectory. And I only keep uh, the internal movement once. Okay? So this is a kind a first kind of uh, kinematic control that exploit redundancy. And we will see a couple of numerical examples uh, today uh, taken from the textbook on how to exploit redundancy. In your uh, project, 99% uh, will have uh, some uh, need to exploit redundancy. Okay. But what if I want to implement uh, my controller in a uh, a control loop. The pseudo code is very simple. You, you can make, you will make a lot uh, of uh, mistakes, but there will be 
most of the time uh, programming mistakes because from the conceptual aspect, uh, the implementation of this controller is quite simple. First of all, I am in a loop. I need to compute position orientation the end effect. And I call the function forward kinematics. Uh, maybe we, we define it as direct kinematics uh, is the same. Okay, forward and direct uh, uh, is the same. So I made confusion with the name, but it's the same. I first compute the position orientation of the end effector in a certain configuration. Then I compute the error, and X desire comes from, for example, my operator as a joystick, and then X desire comes from, uh, I mean, a DAC, a digital acquisition system, uh, whatever it is, comes from the joystick, okay? If uh, it is a pre-programmed trajectory, X desire comes from a file, I just generate X desire with a time law. Uh, if it comes from a sensor based motion, X desire comes from another part of, the, of my code where, for example, I'm deciding to avoid a certain obstacle. So X desired is given by another piece of code. But here I do have X desired in, in this simple time. Then I need to compute the Jacobian. The Jacobian is configuration dependent, and my robot is moving. So whenever I need to use the Jacobian, I need to compute the current Jacobian. Okay, so I need to call the function that we developed together in the previous uh, uh, practice lesson. And so to as assign to a certain variable the current Jacobian. And this is the controller. Look, the controller looks very, very simple is one line of code. I'm using uh, libraries that uh, makes all the mathematical computation for me. So if I need to make uh, the inverse of a matrix or uh, the pseudo inverse, uh, I can rely on libraries. I don't have to do the, the, the code uh, by myself. We will uh, need some very specific code to to the library of MATLAB, but, and the command is PIMB, P-I-N-B, third inverse. Any language has it. So this is simply a pseudocode. Uh, it, it wouldn't run in this way, so it's a simply a pseudocode. So third inverse of the Jacobian that I compute the previous line, multiplied, this is x dot desired. I use the convention that uh, the is the velocity, the D is for the uh, um, acceleration. So Q, the Q, the the Q. Position, velocity, and acceleration. X, the X, the the X. But everyone can use the name that he, he prefer. Plus K multiplied A. This is matrix by vector, okay? You may have a slightly different syntaxes in other languages, but in MATLAB it's very easy. You just write uh, K multiplied E and it makes the and then, do you know this uh, syntax, or do you, who doesn't know it? Is it clear? I'm making the integral here, okay? Plus equal means the new Q desire is equal to the previous one, plus what is here. And what is here is the Euler integration. So look, uh, the QD comes from the previous line, multiplied, uh, and this is the sample time that I should have defined uh, earlier in my program. This is just pseudocodes. This is not going to run, of course, but we will uh, devote several practice lessons to kinematic control, at least three, I don't know, three or four, okay? Because it is, it is important. Okay, just uh, a, a very stupid example taken from uh, another, uh, this is a student from another university, just a colleague of mine sent me and I just use it here. We do have uh, a certain movement uh, for uh, the end effector uh, and uh, the link that it is becoming red because uh, his robot reached the uh, mechanical joint limit. Okay, so this is a graphical way to say if 
it was an experiment, this would have uh, uh, activated some emergency. Just a graphical way to say that. Okay, let us do the same with uh, exploiting the redundancy. The end effect are the same, uh, and uh, no emergency procedures is activated. Okay, this is just one uh, graphical rendering of the implementation of this algorithm with the exploitation of the optimization fun function to, to handle mechanical joint limit. But we will have the opportunity to, to see it later on. Okay, let's see another controller. Now, The previous controller can be uh, considered as uh, a controller that makes use of the linearization of the dynamics. What does it mean, linearization of the dynamics? Our dynamics uh, is uh, nonlinear because the, the time derivative of the error is affected by the presence of the Jacobian. It is a nonlinear function of a Q that is multiplying Q dot. So this guy here is uh, a differen nonlinear differential equation. Okay? And we linearize it because in the end we achieved this one. So we linearize by compensating the nonlinearity here by multiplying. Uh, multiplying by the inverse of the Jacobian or a pseudo inverse, what we have done is a linearization. We compensated for the nonlinearities. Okay. Now, let us see another approach where we don't want to linearize. We will try a different approach. And uh, we are going to use the theorem that we saw last Monday, the stability theorem. And we will see how a stability theorem can be used to design a controller. First of all, so let us write it. Potential Lyapunov function. Potential means that I don't know if this is a Lyapunov function because I don't know its time derivative. For the moment, it's a potential one. I need to find a function that uh, function of the error that is larger than zero, that is positive for all the value of e different from zero but it is null when the error is equal to zero. And we already saw that uh, the best choice, one very common choice, not the best, one very common choice it to have, is to have quadratic forms. So let us try with a quadratic form. It transpose Ke. K is uh, a design matrix. So K is my matrix. I can select K. I just need that it is positive definite, okay? Of proper dimension, the dimension is the dimension of the error. So this is uh, the assumption. Uh, one over two is not strictly needed. I just put it here to have a sim simple number when I make the time derivative, but it doesn't change the properties of the Lyapunov function. Uh, just pay attention 
V is a scalar, so this is a V function of the vector E larger than zero. While here, I cannot say larger than zero, K is positive definite. Okay, do not forget the difference between scalar and matrices. Well, what is the time derivative of the candidate level function? We need to compute it. constant. We don't need to, to use the formula for the derivation of products, okay, because k is constant. So it can be demonstrated that this is the time derivative of this one. But then this is select Q dot. And what is my purpose? My purpose is to have uh, V dot negative. I want the derivative of the Lyapunov function going to zero. Okay? So now the problem is, can I select Q dot such that this guy is uh, smaller than zero? Well, let me think. If I select Q dot in the way it is done, so if I if Q dot is equal and substitute here. from the operator. Okay. So the operator maybe is playing with the joystick. And this is the error I'm facing this moment. I don't know 
the sign of the address. I don't know either the sign of the x dot the sign. So I absolutely don't have any idea of the sign of this guy here. Okay? Okay. This is not very nice, but and let's see the second one. Can you make any any comments on the sign of the second term? Sorry? Why is positive? Uh, here I have. Okay, say uh, K, I'm sorry, K, let us consider K as symmetric, okay? So I have E transpose K, J, A, J transpose K, E. If E is uh, negative uh, or positive, the E times E would make it negative, or would make it positive, so K is positive and the same with Jacobian. The Jacobian is a sign. Uh, the Jacobian, you can make any assumption. So this is still a quadratic form, okay? JA multiplied JA transpose is a positive definite matrix. And this is, I mean, similar to X squared. So we, we are making, let me say, the square of the matrix. K is symmetric, so this is still a quadratic form. Positive definite with minus in front of it. The positive is a. However, J is a Jacobian. And here we are making the assumption that J is full rank. Okay? So let us make the assumption that J is full rank. And I don't know the sign of this one. So, okay. Okay, let, let me simplify the problem. I don't know the sign of this guy here. So I say, okay, let us assume that uh, x desire is constant. If it is constant, its time derivative is zero. And so this disappears. And here, if I select k as positive definite, and I do, and if I assume that I'm not in a, in a, a singular configuration, a thematic singularity. This is smaller than zero. So the result is that we did use the stability theorem. During the use of the stability theorem, the input entered into the, the game, and we used our degrees of freedom, so the, 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 the freedom to use, to design Q dot, in order to impose the conversion to zero to the system. Okay, so the stability to the, to the error. Uh, yes and no, in the sense that uh, from a practical aspect, uh, from a theoretical aspect, we need to have this assumption. We need it, okay? Then, uh, uh, from a practical aspect, uh, we can uh, consider slowly varying trajectory as, as almost constant. Uh, in practice, you can always try to implement a uh, um, controller that has been um, demonstrated for you know, regulation problem. You can always try to use it uh, in a trajectory uh, way, fashion, and see what happens, because, you know. So why? So why can we choose it with this form? 
why can we choose uh, the velocity of the joints in this form? We do on purpose in order to impose the dot smaller than zero. Okay, so but, uh, but we do need some, like, uh, it can be in a different form? Yes. You have to demonstrate that a different from, uh, form uh, is, uh, you know, is a sta stable controller. I mean, what do we have done in the previous one? We have selected Q dot in that way. And we have demonstrated that is a proper way to select the controller. What we are going to do now is we demonstrate that this other controller is also appropriate. And we are going to study a little bit the, the limit of this. But there are several other controllers, and especially for uh, the dynamic controller, we will study several. Well, yes, of course. I mean, you can say, do whatever you want as long as you are able to demonstrate that it's a, a proper one. Okay? So now, here, uh, this slide just uh, recap the first consideration. If we dot is smaller than zero, and we have asymptotic stability. Fine, we are happy with that. However, what happened if uh, I have uh, a redundant robot uh, and the new space is not uh, the, the, the empty one? Is, if I do have a, a null space, <coughs> it can arrive something of the transpose. It can arrive something that is not very pleasant. Let us have a look of this one. J-A transpose K-E. Well, if I do have uh, a null space, it, the definition of null space of a generic matrix, A, I can have uh, that A multiplied x is equal to 0 with uh, x different from 0. Okay? So here, I can face a very unpleasant situation. The situation in which Ke is different from zero, so E is different from zero, but since it is in the null space of Ji transpose, this is zero. It means that V dot is equal to zero. And my robot gets stuck in a configuration with the error different from zero. And we will see the next slide, one example where this can arrive. The good aspect of this controller is that I'm not inverting anything. I'm just making the transpose of the Jacobian. And it's a, a, a great advantage not needed to make uh, the inversion of a matrix from the computational aspect and also from the kinematic singularities one, but there will be other problems. Okay. What happens if I don't want to have via point, but I want to as assign a trajectory? It can be demonstrated, and we are not going to do it now. So there are theorems that demonstrate that the same law has a bounded error during the transient and then goes to zero when the robot stop. Okay? So yes, you can try to use it also. Are you asking for the break in that way? No? <laughs> <laughs> you will make it in, in one second. Uh, so, yes, we can use it uh, as a, a trajectory tracking. Okay? We can use it. There are theorems that demonstrate that the error is bounded. It is important that I know that it's bounded because the, uh, the possibility that I want to avoid is that it is unstable, so diverge to infinity. If I know that it's bounded, I'm I'm happy with that. The block diagram and the pseudocode are, well, 90% equal to the previous one. Because the difference is that uh, I'm making the transpose instead of uh, the inverse here. And here, the only difference is this line. Instead of making PIMV of JA, I, I have JA transpose. Of course, the behavior of the two controllers cannot be the same, and you will touch it with your hands during the practice lesson. There should be differences in, in, in the performance of the two controllers, of course. Let us just see from the practical aspect 
from, not from the practical aspect, I'm sorry. Let us see uh, in one case the meaning of uh, the limitation that we saw if the error belongs to the null space of J transpose. Well, look at, the, at that one. Do you remember that, if you remember, this is the, a, a kinematic singularity for this specific structure. All uh, the, the line or the segment here, if the end effector lies on this, we do have uh, a kinematic singularity, and in particular, we cannot go out uh, from the plane where the two rotational joints are. So I think it's better if we I cannot go out from the blackboard, okay? And the draw over there says that you cannot go along the X direction, okay? So if the error uh, is here, your robot is not able to physically provide a velocity along that direction. And this is the geometric or robotics interpretation of what mathematically is here. So if K multiplied the error is in the null space of JA transpose, your robot gets stuck. Yes, your robot gets stuck because it cannot go in that direction. Okay, physically it cannot go in that direction. And this was just one case study. You can do it with uh, all kind of, kine of kinematic singularities. Okay, we make uh, the break. <laughs>